we've touched on the benefits of heat pump technology and really focused in on air source heat pumps. Now let's turn our attention to geothermal technology. Air source we've discussed, we actually are extracting heat out of the air. The difference between air to geo is with geothermal, we're actually extracting the heat out of the ground. And we do that typically through a closed loop system. So we would bury outside a vertical, it looks very similar to what a well driller does, either a vertical loop system or we can do slinky or racetrack. And slinky, if we spread out a slinky and you see the coils, mm -hmm. that's basically what you're going to be putting into the ground with this polyethylene tubing. Inside the polyethylene tubing is the water antifreeze solution that we're using to transfer the heat from the ground back into the compressor bearing geothermal heat pump. Okay, so is that really the big difference between air source and ground source or geothermal is just that. You're using the air, and so regardless of how cold the air is out there, there is some heat in there that you can extract. Whereas here, you're grabbing the heat from the relatively constant earth, so the liquid that's flowing through here, water or antifreeze or whatever it is, goes in here, and then the refrigerant through a liquid-to-liquid -liquid heat exchanger, essentially, yep. pulls that heat out and runs it up. Exactly, into the furnace, into the coil. You have to have a loop field, though, for that. Yeah, the loop field is very critical, one in its size and the type of material it's being buried in. So we have to be very conscious of that when we're laying out the system, estimating it properly, and then putting it in. The big thing is, again, we're transferring the heat either out of the earth or when we're doing cooling, we're actually taking the heat from the home and pushing it back into the ground. And if you look at it, we're basically recharging the battery. Oh, sure. It becomes a big heat sink where all that heat comes back and then the refrigerant comes back in and yeah. continue to cool down our homes. Sure. I guess one other benefit that I notice is with a geothermal system, you're not going to have a big condenser on the outside of your house. Right. You have nothing outside for anybody else to see. So from an aesthetic standpoint, if you'd like the aesthetics of the house, you will not have this style of a unit sitting outside. This typically is going to be in the basement or in the garage and then in turn piped back into your air handling system. So that summarizes the components. Okay, with a geothermal system, do you need a secondary heat source? Generally not, but in our climate, because it does get so cold, depending on the overall capacity, you may need one just to supplement a little bit when it gets extremely cold. Zero or below outside, we may need to supplement just a little bit to keep the house totally comfortable. And this happens to be a split system unit. When I reference a furnace, this is your compressor to handle your heating and cooling utilizing the refrigerant if we can't keep up, we can still do the dual fuel technology that we talked about earlier in our heat pump segment. We can still have a furnace as your backup and still get the benefit of, is it going to be more economical for me to use the gas furnace under certain conditions versus electrical through the heat pump? Are there other means of backup heat or do you always need to have a backup furnace? There's two choices. One is the backup of the furnace or in some cases, if we had a package geo, we may have electric elements in there to supplement when it gets extremely cold out. That would be a roughly the only time that those electric elements would ever come into play. So it's fair to say that despite the fact that you might need a backup heat source, the cost savings are so dramatic with a geothermal system that they more than uh, cover the cost of the uh, additional heat source. Generally so, yeah. There's a great return on investment overall that the geothermal is going to really pay for itself over the life of the system. So the operating cost efficiencies are fantastic. What about other benefits associated with geothermal? Two different benefits you get with geo that you don't have with an airside heat pump system today. One is the ability to heat domestic hot water with it as well. When we talk of in the summertime running cooling and dumping that warm water back outside, sure. what we have the advantage of now is actually to extract that heat being able to put it into our domestic hot water, the things we use for our showers and washing and those types, it gives us a great benefit throughout the summer while we're air conditioning our home, we're actually assisting to heat our hot water. Second, with geo, we don't have to worry about a defrost cycle. The earth is never gonna get cold enough to where we freeze around that tubing. We don't have to worry about thawing it out. Wow, so that's fantastic. And when you think about the costs associated with domestic hot water, they can be very extreme. And if we're looking in ways to lowering our heating and cooling and domestic hot water bills, consider geothermal, that's for sure. So what about operation and maintenance with a geothermal system? 
The nice thing with today's controls, operation, the homeowner really won't need to pay attention. They set the temperature that they want to desire in the home. It will operate accordingly, whether it can handle it all from the geothermal compressor bearing unit by itself and then stage in the strip or switch over to the fossil fuel as it needs to. It does that automatically. From a maintenance standpoint, the big things, not so much things that we need to do with the compressor bearing unit. However, we still need to maintain the coil indoors change your filters, take care of lubricating blower motors and things like that like you normally would for the indoor air handling unit maintenance that's typically prescribed by the manufacturer. And that makes sense and I'm happy to hear that the operation of the system is pretty simple for the homeowner. But what about when you talk about installation and design of a geothermal system, how important is the contractor? Very important. They need to look at many things. One, we have to understand what is the capacity of the heat pump in order to be able to handle the full needs of the home. Second, we have to look at what is our loop field opportunities. Do we have to go vertical? Are they sitting where there's a lot of rock? If there's a lot of rock, this may not be the right system of choice for them. The other things to take into account is what is it going to do to, if it's a finished landscape already, we need to understand what's that going to do for my landscaping cost to make it look pristine again when we're all done putting in the loop fields. And most importantly is the experience of the contract with the experience of doing geothermal. Sure, so be an educated consumer and get the right uh, model, right components for your situation. And speaking of your situation, I would assume these are great in rural settings, but what about in a city setting? They can be installed in the city as well. We have the opportunity to do vertical well installations. So it would look like a well driller coming into your home, being able to punch vertical loop fields into the ground. In many cases, they'll do it underneath the driveway so it doesn't even disrupt their lawn or anything else. Wow, so it's marvelous technology to consider. Again, be educated on the contractor you select. Because after all, what can go wrong when you're installing one of these or designing it? What happens if you do it incorrectly? The initial loop field is the, the critical aspect because that's pretty permanent. If that is shorted in any way where it's too small for the capacity needed for the home, that's the place where we exchange our heat. And you can think, if it's too small, it's not gonna give us enough heat transfer area. What'll happen then is my operational cost as a homeowner are gonna go up dramatically because there isn't enough field for me to extract the heat needed to keep my home conditioned. So the backup kicks in, or at that point, it just runs straight electric, which is very, very costly at that point to the homeowner. Sure, it really goes against everything you're trying to achieve, the cost savings looking at it as an investment. So do your homework, get the right contractor, and don't skimp on the size of the loop field. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, definitely. Experience is key when you're gonna be selecting a geothermal contractor.